Today is the fifth lecture, which is the last lecture of module 3. Okay. Uh, in this lecture, I will recap what you learnt in module 3, I will make a few points and then I uh, will do a few practice problems. So, in this module, we mainly talked about special functions, we talked about a few special functions that, uh, that we encounter quite often in, uh, in various chemistry courses. And then I talked about, uh, I talked about spherical polar coordinates and cylindrical coordinates. Okay. So, now again these are also things that you will see in your, in your chemistry courses. Okay. So, so, so just to get to the details, in the first lecture, I talked about step functions and Dirac delta functions. Okay. And then in the second lecture, I talked about uh, gamma function and the error function. In the third lecture, I talked about spherical polar coordinates and in the fourth lecture, I talked about cylindrical coordinates and uh, integrals using curvilinear coordinates. Okay. Now, uh, this, this, this material is fairly well covered in, uh, in Macquarie's book in chapters 3 and chapter 8. Okay. So, they, they talk about lot of, they talk about lot of other special functions okay, in chapter 3. Okay, and uh, and and they also talk about generalized curvilinear coordinates in chapter eight. The other in in Krasik, uh, this section is not actually covered in any particular place, but uh, there are parts of it in in chapter eleven and in some other chapters too. They use polar coordinates, so polar coordinates are described here. Uh, delta functions are described where they talk about Fourier transforms, and uh, in the appendices they talk about error functions. Now, a few points is that uh, you will encounter several other special functions okay, in during your chemistry courses and some of these special functions have a representation as an infinite series. So, these special functions like the gamma function had a representation of an integral. Similarly, the Dirac delta function was a special function that was a discontinuous function which is defined only under the integral. But there are some special functions which have representation as infinite series like the Legendre polynomials, Hermite polynomials, uh, Bessel functions, uh, there are many others. Okay. And uh, these are things that you will encounter during your, during your quantum mechanics courses. Now, uh, the other point is that use of spherical polar coordinates is essential in problems like the hydrogen atom. So, the hydrogen atom problem in quantum mechanics, you need, you need spherical polar co coordinates. Okay. So, with this, uh, with this uh, recap, I am going to start working out a few problems okay. and, uh, and uh, I encourage you to also practice other problems given in the books, because I uh, will just be doing a few problems and uh, hopefully with you know, if you are able to work out these problems and also re read the book for some practice problems, you will be able to work out the assignment. Okay. So, the first problem is uh, has to do with the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution of velocities and uh, when you work out this problem, you will, you will see applications of the gamma function and the error function. Okay. So, so, what is the problem? This is a very classic problem that you will encounter in your, when you are studying kinetic theory of gases. Okay. And uh, I am just, uh, I am just showing where error functions and gamma functions are used in this problem. Okay. So, so the statement of the problem is the following. A gas in equilibrium at a temperature T has velocity components V x, V y and V z satisfying a probability distribution f of v x, v y, v z is proportional to exponential of minus m by k b t into v x square plus v y square plus v z square. So, I have chosen to write the exponential function in this form, okay, just because the quantity that I have in the exponent is quite large. Okay. Uh, where m is the mass of a single gas molecule and k b is the Boltzmann constant. So, so, velocity is a vector, it has three components v x, v y and v z 
and uh, each of these components can go from minus infinity to plus infinity. And uh, you are told that if the gas is in equilibrium then the velocity components have a probability distribution that, uh, that satisfies this expression. Okay. Now, now, now we will talk about probability distributions in the later part of the course. Okay. So, so I won't expect you to know too much about them. But, uh, but nevertheless, in this problem, what you are asked to do is to calculate the constant of proportionality. This constant of proportionality that appears before the exponent in the expression for the f, such that the integral, okay, from minus infinity to plus infinity of uh, f of x f of vx vy vz dvx dvy dvz. So, each of the components can go from minus infinity to plus infinity and this integral should be 1. So, so that is the first part. So, you calculate this constant of proportionality sometimes it is called a normalization constant. And uh, what you are doing is you are calculating it so that the integral over this probability distribution is equal to 1. Okay. Next you are asked to calculate the average speed of the gas that is given by this quantity. So, so you have a triple integral of uh, f of v x v y v z times v x square plus v y square plus v z square d v x d v y d v z and this whole thing raised to the power half. So, this is this is the average speed of the gas. So, the average square speed is average square uh, uh, average average square of speed is given by by this expression and the square root of that will give you the average speed. And then you are asked what is the probability that that the x component of velocity is greater than k b t by m or square root of k b t by m. Okay. So, uh, this problem it looks a little daunting, but uh, when you start working things out okay, then things will become very simple. So, so let us work out the first part. So, the first part where you want to calculate this constant of proportionality. So, let me go to that. So, 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 so what I would like is uh, I say that f of v x v y v z equal to let me call a say a times e to the minus m v x square by 2 k b t times e to the minus m v y square by 2 k b t times e to the minus m v z square by 2 k b t. So, so, so this is exactly the same expression I just wrote a constant of proportionality and I wrote the exponential as a as a product of 3 exponential exponential of the sum as product of 3 exponentials. Okay. Now, what we would like is uh, is that uh, this integral you 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 want this integral to be equal to 1. So, so I will write this integral in the following way. Okay, so, I uh, will write this as integral uh, okay, so let me write it explicitly. So, so you have this triple integral and all of them go from minus infinity to plus infinity and uh, I have a times e to the minus m v x square by 2 k b t e to the minus m v y square by 2 k b t and e to the minus m v z square by 2 k b t d v x d v y d v z this should be equal to 1. Okay, now, I can take a outside the integral and I can I can I can this the first term depends only on v x it is independent of v y and v z second term depends only on v y and the third term depends only on v z. So, so I can write this as uh, basically 3 integrals integral e to the minus m v x square by 2 k b t d v x times integral e to the minus m v y square by 2 k b t times uh, d v y and e to the minus integral m v z square by 2 k b t times d v z and this should be equal to 1. Each of these integrals goes from minus infinity to plus infinity.
this should be equal to 1. Okay. Now, the first thing you should see you should be immediately be able to realize is that each of these integrals has the same value because here I am integrating over dvx okay, but I am integrating from minus infinity to infinity. Here I am integrating over dvy exactly the same function e to the minus m instead of vx I have vy okay, but if vy is just a dummy variable you are integrating over it. Okay, so, it is not so the name whether I call it vx, vy or vz okay, the integral will remain the same. So, all you need to do is to calculate one of these integrals and then you are done. Okay. So, so let us just calculate this integral. So, so now what I will do is uh, I will make a transformation of variables I will say let uh, uh, let m v x square by 2 k b k b t equal to u. Okay. Now, uh, well, well, okay. I can just I can just call it equal to u square for now. Okay, I'll just call it equal to u square. And uh, what you will get by this is that uh, you 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 will get that uh, or so so I can write u equal to v x times square root of m by two k b t and uh, you will get d u equal to d v x times square root of m by 2 k b t. Okay. Now, now the advantage of writing this way is that uh, this integral becomes equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity e to the minus u square. Now, d v x is nothing but uh, d u and then you have a uh, you, you have divided by this constant of proportionality. I can take that constant of proportionality outside. So, all I have is uh, this integral multiplied by square root of 2 k b t by m. Okay. Now, this integral is a very familiar integral we have seen this in the in the earlier part okay. and uh, this is just square root of pi. So, so this is an integral that we saw when we did the gamma function. So, so what you get is that uh, this is just equal to square root of pi. So, so what I can get this whole thing is just 2 pi k b t by m under root. Okay. And so, and so this uh, so, so the first first integral was equal to that the second integral will also have the same value. So, will the third integral and so I can write a times this integral uh, this value uh, this value 2 pi k b t by m uh, raised to 3 uh, 3 halves equal to 1. So, a times 2 pi k b t by m raised to 3 by 2 equal to 1 and a is equal to m by 2 pi k b t raised to 3 by 2. Okay, so, this is the this completes the first part. So, we have found the value of a so that uh, your uh, velocity distribution is uh, normalized and we see and we see how the how the gamma function appears very naturally in this in this calculation. Okay. So, the second part in the in the second part of the problem you are asked to you are asked to calculate the average speed of the gas okay and uh, we are given the expression for the average speed of the gas okay so the average speed of the gas we uh, we are told okay so so let me just write uh, v average is equal to this triple integral again okay uh, now you have v x square plus v y square plus v z square times e to the minus m v x square by 2 k b t e to the minus m 
V by square by 2 k B T e to the minus m V z square by 2 k B T times now, now we know the constant of proportionality. So, the constant of proportionality is m by 2 pi k b t raised to 3 by 2 d v x d v y d v z and uh, this is v average square. Okay. So, v average square has this expression and now what we are going to do is to actually evaluate this integral. Okay. Now, it is not uh, again, again it is not very difficult to do. So, so in this case we can see that we can write this as 3 integrals. Okay. So, the first integral, okay. so I will just write the first integral, okay. you have uh, you have v x square multiplied by this whole thing. Okay. So, let me uh, let me write v average square divided by m by 2 pi k b t raised to 3 by 2. Okay, so, I will just take this m by 2 pi k b t raised to 3 by 2 to the denominator and what I will get is uh, I will just write the first term and things will become clear. So, I have v x square e to the minus m v x square by 2 k b t d v x okay, integral minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. And then I have integral e to the minus m v y square by 2 k b t d v y and I have uh, integral e to the minus m v z square by 2 k b t d v z okay, again from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, now, uh, why I wrote it in this way okay, and uh, I wrote it in this way is because, because you know each of these integrals. This was just 2 pi k b t by m. Okay, so, this uh, uh, square root of 2 pi k b t by m this was also equal to square root of 2 pi k b t by m. Okay. So, uh, so, so I can cancel I can cancel uh, out of out of these three, three factors two of them can be cancelled out. So, so I will just write v average square okay, will give me exactly equal to will be exactly equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity v x square e to the minus m v x square by 2 k b t d v x. Okay. And uh, I should mention you have plus 2 other terms. So, okay. Okay. And uh, now, now uh, so, so this and, and you have a factor of m by 2 pi k b t raised to half. Okay, so, this factor is there. So, 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 the other other factor of other two factors of m by 2 pi k b t raised to half they cancel this term. Okay. So, so, you have this and now the plus the two other terms two other terms in the two other terms you will find that uh, that uh, all, all, all that is changed in the two other terms is v x is replaced by v y and in the third term v x is replaced by v z. So, all so the two other terms will basically have the same value. Okay. So, so I can write this as a factor of 3 times. Okay. Now, uh, what I will do is I will write I uh, will I'll keep the I will keep the root pi here okay. and then I will take the m by m by 2 k b t square root of m by 2 k b t I will take I will take inside the inside the v inside the d v actually. So, so I can write this as so, okay. So, let me let us work it out explicitly. So, so I will have m by 2 k b t raised to half and now you have an integral minus infinity to plus infinity v x square e to the minus m v x square by 2 k b t 
d v x ok. So, now, uh, now you do the transformation that we did the last time. So, uh, u is equal to v x square root of m by 2 k b t. So, so v x square, so what we will get is 3 by root pi m by 2 k b t raised to half. Now, v x square will be u x square into k b t by m. So, you have a factor of k b t by m and what you have is integral minus infinity to plus infinity u square e to the minus u square and now d v x is uh, d u and there is another factor of 2 k b t over m. So, sorry this should be a 2 k b t over m times square root of 2 k b t over m ok. So, so, so what will happen is that uh, this factor of k b t over m will cancel this factor ok and uh, what you have here is u square e to the minus u square ok. Now, uh, this can again be expressed in terms of gamma functions ok. So, so to do this we will just uh, do this on one side, I will just work out this integral. So, so, so if you want to work out this integral ok, so I will just work it out this integral, so I will just work it out here. So, uh, so I will put u square equal to t ok and uh, what you will have is uh, 2u du equal to dt ok and uh, also also what we have to do is to is to make this integral because this is an even function so this is twice integral from 0 to infinity so so what we'll so so instead of minus infinity to infinity we'll make it twice integral 0 to infinity and uh, and when you go from 0 to infinity u and t have the same limits ok. And uh, you can you can see what you will get uh, you will get uh, d u will have uh, u d u will be d t by 2. So, so you will have a factor of 1 by 2 ok and you are left with another factor of u, u is square root of t t raised to half and you have e to the minus t d t ok. So, this is nothing but gamma function of 3 halves ok, this is nothing but gamma function of 3 by 2. So, so this is equal to gamma function of 3 by 2 ok, which is equal to half gamma function of half is equal to root pi by 2 ok. So, so this this allows you to do so what we did here was to actually evaluate this integral here ok. And so, and so uh, once you know this this integral is just root pi by 2 and so finally what you have is uh, you have a factor of this is just 3 k b t over m ok. So, so, so this is this is the root mean square this is uh, this is the mean square speed of the gas ok. So, uh, so I should I should I should uh, I should emphasize this is uh, this is the mean square speed of the gas ok and uh, average I should say average uh, the, this is not actually the average speed of the gas this should be this is this is actually the root mean square.
root mean squared speed of the gas. Okay. So, this is a root mean squared speed of the gas and so, uh, let me just this is actually V R M S. So, so this implies V R M S equal to square root of 3 K B T by M. Okay, so, this is your answer. Okay, so, that is the root mean square speed of the gas and, uh, and, so, and, so, and so here we have worked out the root mean square speed of the gas uh, as square root of 3 K B T by M. Okay. Okay, I should have I, I made a small mistake okay this is what I what I wrote by this expression is not the average speed but actually it is called it is the root mean square speed okay because you are you are taking the average of the squares and then you are taking the root. Okay. Next part of the problem is what is the probability that V x is greater than K B T by M. Okay. So, by now by now you should uh, you should realize that uh, I can write f of V x v y v z equal to a function of v x times a function of v y times a function of v z okay. and each of these is a each of these is a normalized probability. So, so, so this is square root of m by 2 pi k b t times uh, e to the minus m v x square by 2 k b t. So, this is the x part and uh, similarly for the y part and the z part. So, now, now you are asked what is the probability that uh, that v x v x is greater than square root of k b t by m. Okay. So, this probability is given by, so it is the integral from square root of k b t by m to infinity. So, so, so these are the values of v that are greater than k b t by m and what you can do is you can just take f of v x d v x. Okay. The, the other integrals if you if you if you look at f of v y d v y and f of v z d v z. Okay, so, these go from minus infinity to plus infinity and these integrals will be equal to 1. Okay, so, these integrals will be equal to 1. So, you do not need to bother about this. So, so, all you need to do is to look at this. So, it is integral from square root of k b t by m to infinity. Now, what is f of v x? So, uh, so it is square root of m by 2 pi k b t times uh, and you have a factor of e to the minus m v x square by 2 k b t d v x. Okay. Now, now again you make the same transformation that we did you said uh, u is equal to v x into square root of m by 2 k b t. Okay. When you make this transformation, okay, now what you will get is uh, now, now when v x equal to square root of k b t by m. Okay, so, what is the value of u? Okay, so, so, this lower limit, so you substitute v as k b t by m, then you get u as integral 1 by root 2. Okay. So, integral 1 by root 2 when, when v equal to infinity u equal to infinity. So, you go from 1 by root 2 to infinity and uh, now, uh, now uh, you can see that uh, d u x equal to d v x into square root of m by k b t. So, so, so I am just left with a factor of 1 by root pi and I have e to the minus u square d u. Okay. Hmm. 
Now, I can write this as half times now what I will write it as uh, I will write it as integral 0 to infinity 2 by root pi e to the minus u square d u minus integral integral 0 to 1 by root 2 of 2 by root pi e to the minus u square d u. Okay. And the reason for writing this in this form is uh, should become obvious okay, because what you have here is nothing but error function of 1 by root 2 this is nothing but the error function of 1 by root 2 okay. and uh, this integral is exactly equal to 1. Okay. The, this is your usual gamma function. So, this is 1 minus error function of 1 by root 2 okay, into 1 by 2. Okay. So, this is the solution. Okay. So, we wrote, so we expressed an answer in terms of this error function. Error function is this incomplete integral. Okay. Uh, it is usually the values of the error function are tabulated. Okay. So, you have tables of error functions. Okay. Incidentally, this this term 1 minus uh, error function is sometimes referred to as the complementary error function. So, then uh, this is written as E r f c of 1 by root 2, this is called the complementary error function. So, the error function is from 0 to 1 by root 2, the complementary error function is basically uh, 1 by root 2 to infinity. So, it is from x to infinity. Okay. So, so uh, the error function plus the complementary error function uh, they add up to 1. Okay. So, so this term 1 minus E r f of 1 by root 2 is written as a complementary error function. So, the solution is just half times the complementary error function of 1 by root 2. Okay. So, so, uh, so we see that uh, you know whenever we deal with these Gaussian functions okay, the error functions and gamma functions appear very naturally when you are dealing with integrals involving Gaussian function. Okay. The next problem that I want to do is uh, relates to the Dirac delta function. Okay. So, so here I am just I am just showing one very uh, very interesting application of the Dirac delta function which uh, which is not uh, usually discussed okay, but uh, nevertheless it is a it is an important point about the Dirac delta function. Okay. So, so, so the problem statement is in quantum mechanics the operator corresponding to the x position of a particle is x hat equal to x. So, x hat denotes an operator okay, and x hat equal to x that means uh, when it operates on a function you just multiply the function by x. Okay. So, now what you are asked to do is to find a wave function psi of x such that the integral of uh, psi of x square dx equal to 1 and x this operator operator on psi of x is a constant time psi of x for all x. Okay. So, now, now let us look at the second condition. Okay. So, the solution Okay. So, the second condition if you look at is so, so, so x operated on psi of x is x into psi of x. Okay. So, this should be a into psi of x. Okay. So, what could be what so, so you want to find a function such that any time you multiply the function by x it is as good as multiplying the function by a. Okay. Now, uh, at first you might think that uh, this is not possible, how can you have something like this for all x okay. and, uh, and uh, so, so the, the, the answer is that uh, this is possible if psi of x equal to delta of x minus a. 
that means whenever psi of x is not equal to a okay whenever psi of x is not equal to a okay then uh, psi of x is 0 whenever x is not equal to a psi of x equal to 0. So, so x times 0 equal to a times 0 and this is satisfied when uh, x equal to a okay then you have uh, delta of x minus a. So, a times delta of x minus a is same as x times delta of x minus a. So, x times is equal to a times delta of x minus a okay. So, so this is a property of the delta function okay and, uh, and you can use this property to, to identify that, uh, that uh, delta of x minus a is what is called in quantum mechanics an Eigen function of x operator with Eigen value Okay, so, so this is something that you learn in your quantum mechanics course and I just want to show you an application of this. Okay, this is not usually discussed in, the, in various uh, books, but, uh, but nevertheless it is an it is a very important idea okay. and you can you and you know you can you, you can physically argue why something like this should be true. Uh, so, so I would not bother with that, but, uh, but nevertheless you can keep this in mind. Okay. So, the last problem that I want to do has to do with uh, spherical polar coordinates okay and here, here we are going to discuss uh, how the spherical polar coordinates uh, which appears naturally in the solution of the quantum mechanical hydrogen atom problem okay is, is actually used okay. So, so the problem statement is the wave function of a 2 p z orbital of a hydrogen atom is given by this this quantity. So, psi I have written as a function of r theta and phi okay. So, usually in the hydrogen atom problem the nucleus is taken as the origin okay and the location of the electron is, uh, is expressed in spherical polar coordinates and this wave function is has this fairly compact notation okay. Now, what you do what you have to do is to calculate n so that uh, this integral is equal to 1. Okay, and you and you are integrating over all space, all 3D space. Okay, so 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 let's work this out. So so this integral over all 3D space. Okay, I'll write the triple integral. Now you have uh, n square, r square, e to the minus. Now now you square this, so you'll get r by a zero cos square theta. Okay, now uh, oh, I. Uh, I, should, I should not write dr dv theta I should write dv okay. So, it is dv okay. So, the volume integral now the volume integral in spherical polar coordinates is r square sin theta dr d theta d phi. So, so you have to do this integral such that this equal to 1 and what are the limits? The limits for r are 0 to infinity, the limits of theta are 0 to pi, the limits of phi are 0 to 2 pi okay. So, so I can take the n square outside the integral and then and then the first thing you notice is that this whole integrand is independent of phi. So, I will just get uh, so I will just get uh, n square times integral 0 to 2 pi d phi times integral now the theta part is basically sin theta cos square theta d theta from 0 to pi and then I have this integral 0 to infinity r square e to the minus r by a 0 uh, r 4 sorry r, r square into r square. So, there are 4 r 4 e to the minus r by a 0 dr and this should equal this should equal 1 okay. So, now so now this the first integral will just give me a factor of 2 pi. The second integral if you want to do the second integral the easiest way to do it is to put cos theta equal to equal to x 
or, or, or equal to t. So, if I put cos theta equal to t then, uh, then uh, d, d t is uh, sin theta d theta. So, minus sin theta d theta and uh, so, so this becomes integral and when the theta equal to 0 then uh, cos theta is 1. So, it becomes from minus 1 to 1 I am taking the minus factor there and uh, what I will get is t square d t. Okay. So, I can I can write this in this form okay, where uh, I, I substitute I substituted t equal to cos theta okay, using that substitution you can get it in this form. Okay. And now here here again again you have a very familiar object here. So, so suppose I put r by a uh, suppose I put r by a 0 equal to t uh, r by a 0 equal to u okay. then uh, r to the 4 is uh, is 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 r is u times a 0. So, r raised to 4 is a 0 raised to 4 And again the limits remain the same okay. and I have u raised to 4 e to the minus u du, du and uh, du times a 0. So, so what did we do in the second integral I put uh, I put u equal to r by a 0. Okay. So, then d u into a 0 equal to d r. Okay. So, that was this last part d u into a 0 and then uh, r by a 0 is u. So, I have e to the minus u and uh, u is r times. So, r raised to 4 will be replaced by u raised to 4 a 0 raised to 4. Okay. Now, uh, now, now this a 0 is a constant. Okay. Now, this integral is uh, t cube by 3. So, uh, t cube by 3 from minus 1 to 1 is uh, is 1 by 3 minus uh, plus 1 by 3 that is 2 by 3. So, I have 2 pi into 2 by 3 into a 0 raised to 5 and then now what do we have here? You have integral 0 to infinity u raised to 4 e raised to minus u that is nothing but gamma function of 5. And gamma function of 5 is equal to 4 factorial and uh, 4 factorial is 24. Okay, so, this equal to 1 implies uh, times an n square. Okay, gamma function of 5 is 4 factorial which is 24. Okay. So, so, what this implies is that n square. So, 4 into 24 is 96, 96 divided by 3. So, uh, 96 divided by 3 is 32, 32 pi a 0 raise to 5 equal to 1. So, implies n is equal to 1 by square root of 32 pi a 0 raised to 5. Okay. So, so this is a constant of proportionality such that this wave function is normalized. So, this is a very interesting problem okay, in the hydrogen atom okay, where we are using spherical polar coordinates and we are also using gamma functions. Okay. So, so, therefore, I think the tools that we learnt in this in this module are very useful in, uh, in, in various areas especially in quantum mechanics of, uh, of spherically symmetric problems like the hydrogen atom problem. Thank you.